Are $500 GPUs getting better or worse over time? If you could go back just three years and drop $500 on a graphics card and then fast forward to today and compare it to what you can get today, are you getting more for your money? Are you getting less for your money? Or is it really all about the same? And that is the subject of today's video. I recently finished two different benchmarking videos here on the channel where I benchmarked a 3070 and talked about its performance in 2023. And then I also reviewed the 7800 XT and talked about how that is performing in 2023 as well. It occurred to me after I completed both of these videos that, you know, both of these cards launched at $500 for their original MSRP. The 7800 XT is still listed at a $500 US MSRP. It is still a relatively new card. And I got to thinking about it. How far have we come over the last three years? Unfortunately, there is a lot of resentment within the PC community, particularly around graphics cards and really towards PC hardware in general. PC builders and PC gamers are still upset about all the scalpers and the overinflated prices for the GPUs over the last couple of years. And now that GPUs are regularly available, and in some cases you can find a good deal, overall gamers are kind of jaded at this point simply because they don't feel like we're getting the price to performance that we deserve. And quite frankly, they don't think that the value is there. Now with that premise in mind, what I would like to do is take the benchmarking data from my two videos on the 30 70 and the 7800 XT and compare that data and say, hey, look, both cards are $500. They're three years apart. How far have we come in three years? Now, I understand the pushback here, okay? I understand a lot of people are gonna say this is not a fair comparison. If you really wanna answer the question, you really need to look at two different NVIDIA GPUs that are three years apart and both cost $500. And then you need to look at two different AMD GPUs that are three years apart and also cost $500. And then it would be a little bit more fair. And you know what? I agree with that and so that is why we are going to look at some third-party benchmark data and perform that exact analysis before we talk about my benchmark data. You see, I don't have 50 different GPUs to pull from like some reviewers, and so unfortunately, I have to work with what I have. I had a 7800 XT sent to me by a subscriber, RK Benchmarker. Thank you again, man, so much. I really do appreciate it. And then I had a 3070 sent to me by geekbuying.com, and they gave me a discount code for my audience. If you guys want to buy a 3070 at a discounted rate. There you go. But I was able to run my own independent benchmarks on those cards. And that is why I made those videos. And we can talk about that data. But to do two NVIDIA cards and two AMD cards, unfortunately, I don't have that type of inventory. And so today I want to look at some data from techspot.com as well as techpowerup.com and compare some data here and talk about how different cards stack up against each other over the course of three years. And so first of all, I want to start with NVIDIA, then we'll work our way over to AMD, and then we'll talk about my benchmark data. Okay, so on the NVIDIA side of things, we have the RTX 3070 and we have the RTX 4060 Ti. The 3070 released October the 29th, 2020, and the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model released July the 18th, 2023. Both cards had a US MSRP of $500. Now the 3070 has eight gigabytes of VRAM, which unfortunately has not aged all that well, while the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And so for $500, the same price that you paid for a 3070 three years ago, you can now have literally double the amount of VRAM. And so from that standpoint, you are progressing a little bit. And then of course you have things like AI technologies and stuff that the 3070 simply doesn't have, like frame generation. However, I've said it before, and I will say it again, and I will die on this hill. The AI technologies like DLSS and frame generation and things of that nature, they're cool and all, they really are, but they should be the icing on the cake. They should not be the cake. And so with that being said, of course, as gamers, we really care about that native rendering, raw rasterization performance. And unfortunately, when you compare the 3070 to the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model, they are basically the exact same amount of performance. And we know this by looking at techspot.com. You can see both for the 1080p data as well as the 1440p data that the 3070 and the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model, despite being three years apart and costing exactly the same price at $500, they are basically the exact same amount of native rendering performance. 
points. Now, to make matters worse, if you want to be extra technical here, if you start looking at these charts, you will see that technically the 3070 in some cases is marginally faster than the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model. And if you look over at techpowerup.com and you start looking at the relative performance, you will see Tech Power Up has the 3070 listed as 5% faster than a 4060 Ti. And so for me, I take a step back and I look at this and I say, this is exactly why gamers feel so jaded. This is why gamers are upset with Nvidia specifically. I mean, they're upset in general at the market and rightfully so, but this is why they're really upset at Nvidia. That's it, that's all you're getting. You're getting more VRAM. You're basically getting the exact same amount of performance, technically a little bit worse in some cases. And yeah, it's, it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing to be impressed with. And that is why gamers are so upset about it from the Nvidia side. But now let's take a look at AMD. Now AMD is a little bit trickier than Nvidia simply because with Nvidia, I could easily take a card that came out in 2020 and compare it to a card in 2023 a 30 and 40 series card respectively and compare the pricing at $500 and call it a day however with AMD on the other hand in order to be fair I do need to take a 6000 series GPU and compare it to an AMD Radeon 7000 series GPU but the problem there is that a, they're not exactly three years apart, and B, well, AMD didn't exactly have a launch MSRP of $500 exactly. They had a car that was 479 with a 6700 XT, and a car that was a little bit above that, I think about 549 with a 6750 XT. And so in order to be as close as I can possibly be with this comparison, I'm choosing to compare the 7800 XT to the 6700 XT. Because the 6700 XT had a launch US MSRP of 479 so it's right there at being $500. And also, whenever you start looking at 7800 XT review videos, mine included, you will find out that a lot of people know that if you compare die sizes, that the 7800 XT is not the true successor to the 6800 XT. Some people say the 6800 non-XT, and some people even say the 6700 XT. And so from that standpoint, I definitely think this is more than a fair comparison. Now, with that being said, the 6700 XT launched March the 18th, 2021, for a US MSRP of 470 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. The 7800 XT launched September the 6th, 2023 for a US MSRP of $500 and 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And right there, you can see there is a nice increase in VRAM. And so that is definitely a trend we wanna keep seeing here. Even though the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte model is not really a great card, at least we saw that increase in VRAM for the same amount of money. And once again, we're seeing it here with AMD. So again, a trend I do wanna see continue happen within the gaming industry. But how's the performance? Well, if we take a look at techpowerup.com, you will see that they have the 7800 XT listed as 48% faster than the 6700 XT. That is very nice. It really is. And that's the type of level of performance you would want to see for the same amount of money over the course of a few years. And unfortunately, on the Nvidia side of things, we did not get that. But on the AMD side of things, we are getting that. And now let's take a look at techspot.com. And as you can see, the 15 game average at 1080p has a 7800 XT way ahead of the 6700 XT. And again, at 1440p, you see the exact same kind of behavior where the 7800 XT is way ahead of the 6700 XT. And so again, you have what you want to see. You want to see an increase in native performance after a couple of years for the same amount of money. And right here with the 6700 XT, when compared to the 7800 XT, you get it, that's exactly what you get. But now let's take a look at my benchmark data and compare the 3070 to the 7800 XT and finish up with some final thoughts. Okay, starting off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Ultra preset at 1440p, I have the 3070 and 7800 XT both running at stock settings. And as you can see, the 7800 XT is clearly faster than the 3070. These cards cost the same amount of money, they are three years apart. And so while you may not get the performance uplift you were looking for for $500 on the Nvidia side of things, on the AMD side of things, the performance is definitely there. Your 1% lows are better, your average is better, your active frame rate is better. And because the 7800 XT has more VRAM to use, Assassin's Creed has taken advantage of that and utilizing more VRAM here. Whereas on the 3070, the game has to be a little bit more conservative because it has an eight gigabyte limit of VRAM. Next up is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I ran the in-game benchmark at 1440p on the Ultra preset. And again, both GPUs are at stock settings. And as you can see here, the 7800 XT is obliterating the 3070 in Call of Duty. Call of Duty, for whatever 
whatever reason, absolutely loves AMD GPUs. And the 7800 XT is already faster than the 3070. But when you talk about a game like Call of Duty, it's definitely going to push it way further ahead of the 3070. And we see that here. The 7800 XT has way better 1% lows. The average FPS is closer to 140 FPS at times on the 7800 XT, whereas the 3070 is averaging around 85 FPS, give or take. And so again, another clear example that for $500, you can get the performance you're looking for. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p on the high preset, no upscaling of any kind, all native rendering here, no ray tracing. Again, both GPUs are at stock. The 7800 XT has an average frame rate of 94 FPS, whereas the 3070 has an average frame rate of about 6970 FPS. And of course, the 1% lows on the 3070 are right below 60 FPS, whereas the 1% lows on the 7800 XT are in the low 80s. And once again, because the 7800 XT has more VRAM to utilize, the game is taking advantage of that. Next up is Hogwarts Legacy. Native rendering, no upscaling, no ray tracing, 1440p. We are using the high preset. The GPUs are at stock settings. And as you can see, the 1% lows here on the 7800 XT are way better. You are talking more than double the performance on the 1% lows with the 7800 XT versus the 3070. And of course, the average frame rate here is also significantly better on the 7800 XT when compared to the 3070. Because the 7800 XT has more VRAM to utilize, it's utilizing it. And I definitely think that is making a really big difference here in terms of overall performance. And so definitely a game that is playable on the 3070, but much more enjoyable on the 7800 XT. And for my final game, I have God of War 2018 running on the ultra preset at native 1440p. And again, the GPUs are at stock. The 7800 XT is once again, obliterating the 3070 across the board. Better active frame rate, way higher average frame rate, way better 1% lows. This is a case where the VRAM doesn't overly matter. Both GPUs are utilizing about the same amount of VRAM. So this is a game where the VRAM is not really going to give you an advantage. This is native rendering here. And the 7800 XT is a massive performance uplift over the 3070. Now wait, wait, before you go and write all those negative comments about me being a shill and an AMD fanboy and Nvidia hater and all that stuff, hear me out. This video was not about AMD versus Nvidia or anything like that. It was about your money, your $500. If you spent $500 three years ago, what could you get for it? And if you spend $500 today, what can you get for it? GPUs are expensive. For $500, you can get an entire gaming console like the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. And that is the argument I have to deal with all the time when console gamers come to my channel and they say, why do you game on PC? And why do you think PC is better? Well, it's better for a lot of reasons and I've already covered that in multiple videos. But the number one argument is PC is too expensive. And something that we'll point to is GPUs, for example. And that is a very valid argument because PC hardware is incredibly expensive. And it's incredibly important for us to look at the value of things and say, okay, is our $500 going as far as it used to go? And unfortunately, if you're looking at the Nvidia side of things, it is not going as far as it used to go. It's not. But on the AMD side of things, it is going far. And so it comes down to so many things, you know? I mean, you might not even need an upgrade right now, and that's great. And if not, then, you know, maybe when you do need an upgrade, maybe Nvidia will have more to offer in the $500 range. I know they're getting ready to do a refresh in terms of their GPU lineup with a Super Series. And I think the 4070 recently got an official price cut down to 550. So, I mean, that's not $500. It's more than $500, but it is a step in the right direction. And so these are things you can think about. And and overall, I just wanted to present the data because I know a lot of people honestly think that, you know, if I'm going to build a PC, if I'm going to get a new GPU, I have to pay $800. I have to pay $900. I have to pay $1,000 plus. And the reality is you don't have to do that. You might have to do that if you do decide to go with NVIDIA and you do want a certain level of performance. However, if you're willing to go with another option like AMD, for example, then you do have some incredibly awesome options like the 7800 XT. But really, it's your PC, your money, your time, effort, energy, all the things. So it really just depends on what you want. Massive shout out to all my Patreon members. You guys are totally awesome. I had a Patreon member make the music for this video. I had a Patreon member send me the 7800 XT for review. And I had another Patreon member make the layout you're watching right now. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for the continued support. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please do me a favor. Hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.